Does ranked and beat Camille even if they're equal and she has Sunderer? No, then, then the Camille should win in the isolate 1v1. Su Sunderer is just an extremely broken item in isolate 1v1. Okay, I get at least jungle, so that is extremely nice. Against Garantop. So somebody played this against me. He went first strike Camille when I was the Garen. He went first strike Camille against me. I wanted to try this. I told myself I wanted to try this setup. Every move you made, I was watching you. Okay, uh, Garen Heike counterpicked himself by picking Garen into Camille. It's a very good matchup for Camille. It's not too good early game, but after first item, it's just it becomes completely, completely one-sided. I think I want to go deal it and just play very aggressive. This guy is called chat restricted. I already love it. What's the first strike reasoning? Basically, I could go grass, but it doesn't really make that much sense. I could go conquer, but if I go first strike, I can always proc it first against Garen, right? With my W. I can always choose when I, whenever I want to fight. So I think first strike is just very uh, good against a matchup like Garen, because I always am the first person that will be hitting. Now this game chat, I could go for Trinity Forge, I could, or I could go for Divine. Depending on if I'm snowballing or not, I will choose between them. If I'm like a little bit behind, I probably want Divine Sunder to catch back into the game. If I'm ahead, I probably want Trinity Forge to keep steamrolling over the game. So that's my thought process here. Uh, both work because they have five squishies kind of, but Garen is somewhat tanky, right? Rengar could be going for like the Gordon, so it could be somewhot tanky. Uh, looks like they're both started in lane. Uh, I, I, I find it hard to face check a Garen a Rengar here, right? So I didn't get my wards, but I'm assuming Rengar is going to be pathing into bot lane here then. Okay, I think I could have gotten my second auto off if I spaced a little better, but it's okay. It's okay. Cancelled one auto though. I could have auto queued auto. That's okay. He's training in my level 2. Maybe should have selected my E. I wasn't fully ready for my level 2 even. I'm a bit zoned out, I gotta focus. Elise is full clearing it, super fast pathing at the top, so we can dive level 3 here, if she wants to come. She's gonna be level 3 after the Grom, so I would want to dive. That's why I'm paying my Jonah to come here. And I gotta push this in as fast as possible, so that we can get this dive in guaranteed. I use my Ignite here to already get him 130 HP lower for the dive. And there's simply gonna be zero counterplay for the bro. Wow, I actually die. Ah, it's okay though. The Garen dies. The wave is stuck below, behind there. I should have flashed, I suppose, but I got me and which is extremely unfortunate. Honestly, but it's okay. My Elise gank was super, super nice. Garen was pathing. So the thing here is, right? Multiple things to take away here. First of all, Garen's biggest mistake is falling from my level two, right? I came level two and Garen was still trading me. Second biggest mistake by Garen is the fact that he walked up and is trading whilst his jungler is pathing into bot and my jungler is pathing into top. So Garen is on weak side, but he is still playing as if he is strong side, right? That is the second mistake that Garen did. And then the third mistake is trading just before the wave crash into his turret. So there was a lot of things that the Garen did wrong here. In terms of fundamentals, he completely misplayed his entire early game there. Okay, a third and 29 gold, I, I appreciate that. He didn't track the junglers. He didn't respect my level uh, jungle pathing. He didn't respect my level up timers. And then he was trading whilst the wave was pushing into him. Uh, what am I even doing? Like, what am I even doing? What am I even doing? But what is this Elise even doing? But what am I even doing? But like, Elise, like, you throw... Okay, it's okay! It's okay! It's really not okay, by the way. But it's okay. Rengar's at 36 CS. Yes. I don't even know how Bro got to 36. I guess he took some camps from the Elise, yes. He took Elise's bot side camp. So the Rengar's going to be super farmed, and he's going to recall and come back into topside, because remember, he started his clear in topside. The only issue I have right now is trying to play out this bounce. I'm gonna get my biscuit at minute 6 again, so I can use a biscuit to help me try and get this... A bounce in, but yeah, I'm not in the healthiest position and Rengar is coming back into topside and Elise is going to be both side. So right now what I want to do is slow push this wave, hard push next wave, get it to crash and then Rico. I don't necessarily want to trade that much because I'm currently... Oh, Elise is still going topside, but Rengar will be here as well. Jungle tracking chat. See, I am respecting of the jungle tracking. Alright, and now I'm going to be building Kindle Gem Longsword. The reason I go Kindle Gem here is because Garen is a champion that plays to execution ranges. So it's much better for me to be building this here instead of simply building the Exical Mark. Health is extremely important when you're ahead because right now I still have more than enough damage to kill the Garen. However, he will never have enough damage to kill me anymore with his combo with his like his ult ignite, right? Because I've built the HP. So if you're ahead, build defensive. Again, my early game... Okay, so Rengar is 48. He was 36 last time I saw him, so he took three camps. 
The hardest position in line here was the bounce. I got that in. So right now I can just permafreeze this. I gotta make sure I thin out quite a lot though. Because if I don't thin out right now, the wave is simply going to become too big. Because this wave is gonna come as well. So I have to thin out. Now, I'm thinning out at my corner of the lane. So I want to keep maybe around 4 means alive. So if there's around 4 to 5 means alive, it will keep pushing into me. So now there's 5 alive. This is pretty solid. And remember, because I'm farming at my side of the lane, I of course want to keep a little bit more means alive. Nice. I want to zone him from the EXP. Zone him from the EXP successfully. Wave well, still pushing into me. I'm gonna get level 7 here. Rangor shows both. Sorry, Garen. Alright, chat. First thing you do after getting a kill, always super important, is look where next wave is at. Alright, next wave is here. So right now, I want to slow push this wave a little bit, but already start pushing, because I have to push this wave and this wave, and then I get a clean crash to make it bounce back into me again. So I'm going to push as fast as I can now, because now I know guaranteed that this minion wave will walk through the lane. All I need to do is basically keep this one minion alive, and there you see, now this wave is walking through the lane, I can farm it in a comfortable position, focus the casters to be as fast as possible, and then the wave will be bouncing back into me, and I can look to kill the Garen on the bounce again. Very important to do this consistently every time you get a kill, right? You always want to see where's the next wave at, how do I approach the wave scenario. To be fair, I would really want this blade, sell my D-blade, and then I have a Trinity Force. Okay, Rengar could become topside, so I gotta be quick here. I lose a little bit of tempo, but I get my full power spike. Okay, enemy bot is really far ahead, so... This game is going to be relatively tricky. Enemy drone is also pretty far ahead, but my mid lane is even, so that's good. I do lose a full cannon wave. Yeah, is it worth it? It's hard to hard to say. I, I would want my jungle to not go here. The Garen only has 29 CS though. And again, the reason why this Garen is so far behind is because he basically lost his laning phase in the first four waves, right? By not respecting my level two and by playing the weak side as if he is strong side. He was training so much even though he's full weak sided. So that combination led to him completely getting destroyed the lane. Now we need to look for a way to all... Okay, this is amazing that they kill both. Okay, well done, Yon. That might be easier, but they do take a full mid turret. Now here, what you do against Garen's that are going to play safe like this, I need to look for ways to still expand my lead without having to kill him. So that's probably going to be through plates. There we go. Now I want this wave to start pushing into me. I'm getting my ignite back, he only has berserkers. And like I said, I need to find a way where I'm still expanding my lead, but risk averse. And the best way to probably do that is through plates. Remember, his W does not block my Q damage because it's true damage. So what I can do here... I think he dies. Okay, I misplayed. Uh, the Echo W placement was very good. I didn't expect it to be here. I didn't expect him to ever think I'd be cutting there. So the W from Echo was uh, was just extremely smart, honestly. And here I will prioritize my time at Tiamat simply because, again, Camille has very limited wave clear. So the faster you get this item, it's going to be benefiting you a lot. All right. Um, so let's see. What is enemy win condition? It's definitely the Yasuo. Yasuo is their main win condition, right? That's pretty much it. I mean, the Echo and Rengar are not weak. This guy should back off, though. I mean, he does not have flesh, but I think the Ellie should back off. He's literally just wasting his own time here. Garen is going to have to recall. I might have enough tempo to get this full turret here now. So that is a nice thing. Yasuo has a 30 CS up and 4 plates. Every time I see Yasuo or Yon bot lane, I feel like they're completely stomping my bot lanes. Alright, so this is very massive to get, of course, if we get this. Because then we're also finally freed from the top lane. As then we can start roaming. Okay. Uh, he's walking up extremely comfortable, so I'm... I don't see Rengar bot lane either, so I have a feeling that Rengar is here. Else I don't understand why this Garen would walk up, right? So unless he's buffing, Rengar is probably hanging around topside. Okay, now he's walking very... Okay, yeah, Rengar's bot side. Fix the side wave to make it bounce back into me by crashing it into the turret. Very similar to the laning phase, you just want the means to crash into the turret so it will bounce back into you. Really? Really? Now, I would just call it unfortunate. I'm going to be building full damage, full greedy here. And the reason as to why is because we are currently behind in this game state. So, I'm building full damage because 
ultimately, if I build defensive, I will still be getting killed by most of these guys. I definitely want Tabis this game, but I'm going to prioritize getting this. First of all, it'll make me faster on the map, but second of all, I need the extra damage to look to play a little bit more aggressive. This game, since I am losing, right, I have 3 out of 6 kills, I want to look for plays that are a little bit more risky. I'm not necessarily looking to avoid risks, I'm looking to find the risks, because I need to play differently in order to get in a good position in this game. So I want to look to get this gold ACP, and then I probably want to start playing for the bot tier 1 turret. So in fact, I'm going to be pinging me bot. And I'll explain exactly why I'm going to go be bot now. First of all, I win the side lane against the Echo or the Garen. But I don't want a team fight. Camille is not the best team fighting at this scenario. And the next objective is going to be the Herald. So what I want to do in this scenario, whilst the enemy team has a stronger 5v5, is I want to go to the side lane, avoid the 5v5 scenario, and look to get stronger through side lane resources, such as this tier 1 side waves and jungle camps, right? So I want to consciously play away from the 5v5, which will most likely happen on the neutral objective. And instead, I'm going to be looking to play in the side lane. Like I said, side lane is good for me, 5v5 is not good for me. I win side lane against Echo, I win side lane against Garen, GG. Now Garen could still come, or Garen could be pushing up top. I'm not sure, and Rengar could come for me as well, because I haven't seen anybody on the map. I'm kind of scared here. But I want this wave to bounce back into me. I'm going to take a good death, or make the wave bounce back into me. And now I just get my thing, and now I want to start maybe looking to build more defensive. 80 damage, 80 damage, 80 damage, and they're all relatively strong. Echo's kind of out of the game, so only AP damage. They do have burst, burst, and burst, so Sterex is not bad. They have true damage here, so I think Sterox is probably better than Death Sense here because true damage gets countered, or Death Sense gets countered by true damage. Ooh, my team is smurfing it. They got the Herald too. I can finally play for this bot tier 1 turret here. Where is the Garen? I haven't seen him on the map for a super long time. My entire team died, huh? That sucks. Maybe I can snoop a kill here on the mid wave. I gotta avoid this thing though. The only way to avoid it is to get like this. No, still spotted me. Alright, fixing the mid wave, and then I'm gonna collect the bot wave as well afterwards. Oh, maybe I can sneak this. This will be massive. Okay, this is massive chat. I get 250 gold extra for me. I gotta look for moments of tempo pockets where I can get resources, right? I knew they were all gonna be recalling there. I know Yasuo doesn't have flesh. Maybe I can look to make a roam on the midwave too, because the Yasuo doesn't have flesh, and it's almost a 1k shutdown that I could look to collect. But if I die, I feel like the game is over. Like, right now, I'm I'm our team's win condition, right? Together with the Yon. And the Yasuo and, and, and their team is their win condition. So I gotta just be very, very thoughtful with the decisions I make here, because if I die once, uh, I, I, I'm kinda... Okay, yes, we'll stop. Okay. If we can find anybody right now, this will be massive. At least, are you gonna press something? Where is my team even? Hello, heal me! Soraka, you're full HP! Nah. I have. Alright, so how do I carry this game? And to get this shot down, I need to still play side lane, and I need to look to get that bot tier 1 turret. Okay, this is massive. Okay, chat, we got the shutdown. That's so massive. Okay, now we can get the turret as well. If my team stays alive. Oh. Nice. I think I even have tempo to get this. Oh, please don't all die. Ah, uh, no. He flashed at least 25. No, he killed everybody again. Soraka had ult. I, I think this guy might be win trading. Alright, we did get two turrets and the shutdown. I got a splash. Oh, I killed ult. Mm. 
Can I take my kills? Don't take my kills. I misplayed mechanically super hard in that skirmish though. Okay. Yasuo has no flesh. I need to focus on the Yasuo here. Holy shit, my damage. Well, I guess his damage too! I thought we were chilling, but we were not chilling. I really thought we were chilling, and then I was dead. Go in! I'm, I swear my teammates are, are, are the worst players in the game, no? Like, they are actually dog shit. All of them. Not a single one is, I feel like, actively trying to win this game. No! You don't do that! You just don't do that! You just don't do that! Yes, sauce so here. Yeah. This guy's good. I shouldn't even try him over one. Why is nobody reacting even when I when I when I like like why is nobody reacting? Sorry! But you! Oh, but you! This game! Okay, I'm moving. Golems, by the way, we're doing golems. Oh, let me quickly do golems. Mm, yeah, let me quickly do golems. I missed my E. My Elise was doing golems. Let that sink in. Alright, you switch field for that, I guess. I'm dead. Oh! That's a guarantee. What? I TP there. Oh! We won! I can't believe it! You know how mad the Yasuo is now. I had to sweat for that one. Yeah.